big chip on his shoulder coming in anyway this season losing to Iowa three times last year so they made up for that Indiana wins the opening tip and we are underway in front of a packed house and you see Iowa starting out in man to man they will switch their defenses throughout the game and Indiana looking right away to get Mackenzie Holmes a touch inside look at the attention Holmes gets on the block when she catches day on the field on the drive shot clock down to five here's Berger to let fly got it to go Grace Berger loves the mid-range game and there you see Chloe Moore McNeil as soon as Indiana scores her number one job is to find Caitlin Clark and bother Caitlin Clark the entire time down the floor so in game number one as we know by now Clark had a big big game with 35 points took a lot of shots but also turned the ball over eight times well, she's the player who has to get everyone involved, the player with the ball in her hands a lot. So, yes, it's going to be important for her. Her first one of the day. Got it from three-point land. So she's off to a terrific start. The first time these teams played, it was a fun up-and-down matchup. Both teams shooting the ball really well, in particular in the first half. It isn't that fun when teams can really score and really shoot it. Their numbers are almost identical in many categories. Parrish on the baseline and... A scrap for that. Iowa comes away with the basketball. And on the drive, Martin. And it'll go down. The seniors also very good from three point territory. Get inside for two. And you see both teams are looking to push the pace. There's an off target there, but she's hitting an eye popping 47% behind the three point line. Marshall on the wing. For two. When you talk about shooting percentages, she makes 67 percent. And like the crowd needed to get louder, they're off to a 7 2 start. Long range, and that's off the back iron by Parrish. Clark in transition will kick it. Martin hits it from three point land. What a start for Iowa. Back live here at Iowa. 10-2 start for the Hawkeyes. And a 10-0 run for Iowa that came over 1 minute and 24 seconds. That's like the blink of an eye. Coming out of that timeout, Iowa in a zone defense, but it doesn't change what they're doing on the offensive end. McKenna Warnock absolutely bottoms out of three but they're very dangerous beyond that line even beyond Caitlin Clark 13 to 2 this crowd into every second cup catch more McNeil underneath and a really nice job against that zone for Mackenzie Holmes to turn find the open teammate cutting to the lane with a top scoring team 88 points per game and looking like they're on all cylinders out of the gate they're five for five three for three beyond the three-point line that's all cylinders I would say so here's Clark right around the logo where she lives and getting the turnover back to Berger in transition she had a huge game and they met the first time No shot there. They'll swing it. Martin open. <laughs> Iowa off to a very, very quick start here. A 13 to 6 lead for the Hawkeyes, who had a 10 nothing run in the blink of an eye to jump out in front. Dave O'Brien, Rebecca Lobo, and Holly Rowe with you. And now the Hawkeyes with a turnover. They came in as the number six team in the country in the end, number two. Iowa has had success early in this game, getting stops and doing this. Watch how fast Caitlin Clark pushes the ball up the floor. And always more than one body on her at a time. A tangle and a foul. A whistle here, 531 to go in the first. And the foul will go against the Hawkeyes. That's on one up. The 6-1 senior picks up the personal. 
Well, the first meeting was on February 9th in Bloomington. It was pulsating in front of a record crowd of about 13,000. That game had 14 lead changes, 11 ties. And that jumper will go. And looking for Mackenzie Holmes to really start to get rolling. This senior's had a spectacular career, 23 and 7. That's her average coming into this one. With the bounce down into the lane and a whistle on the play. Stokey will take the hit and head to the line, which is not necessarily a great thing for the freshman. Any sign of jitters early on? He played in so many big games in front of crowds like this on national television. But you've got two teams that know how to play in this environment. Yeah, I think Iowa right now is feeding off it. The question is, can they sustain it as this first quarter continues to go on? Clark, there she goes again. Yes! They talk about range. It's limitless for her. Dave, there's just no one like her. No one like her in the women's game, college or pro. The comparisons to Steph Curry keep on coming, don't they? And they are legit when you talk about the range across midcourt. She's in shooting range in transition. Martin, nice move there and takes the hit as well. Kate Martin, she's been a real factor early here. I don't know how you practice against somebody with that kind of shooting ability. Neither do I. Yeah, you just you get a guy on the scout team and just say pretend you can make those consistently and we'll see if we can guard you. Right. Berger beyond the three. Great passer as well. Slams on the brakes. Or McNeil. Berger takes a stumble in the lane and a whistle there with 3.48 to go. Berger with a pull up pop. Yes. She was superb in game one against Iowa. She had 26 along with nine rebounds and six assists and has half a dozen early. The queen of the mid-range. Paul Pierce, her favorite NBA player. That's why she wears that number she does. Here's Clark to launch. Got a good clean look. Sonano had it taken away. Laura McNeil gets it off for Berger. She wants to push it. Larry Norman deal with a kick out and a long one coming, and yes, there's on the 6 3 freshman from Israel. Yeah, great job and decision by Norm McNeil because she could have pulled from three herself, but instead the penetrating kick to the best three point shooter. Davis will set it up. Lisa Bluter on the sideline, the 38 year as a head coach, up and in for two. Stokey, I know you really like her game, and that's one reason why she's strong. Yeah, she's a powerful player, and she just sprints the floor hard every time, puts pressure on the defense in transition. 21-13, Iowa. Looking to knock off the number two team in the country. Holmes, yes! Sweet turnaround. She has nine double-doubles this season. How about Mackenzie Holmes, though, stretching it out a little bit. We're used to seeing her do most of her work within four or five feet of the basket. You guys were great with her on game day today. Into the paint and a tie up there. Possession arrow will keep it on this end of the floor. Turn off for a quick start as that shot deflected. Good defense there by Garzon. Outside, she could be a dangerous scorer. Recently, at 24 against Ohio State, whistle there, and a three-point play for Holmes. Indiana has made their last four, so they're on a 10-2 run. They're down 11 very quickly. Battle for the rebound, and it'll go the other way. Nice job here by the Hoosiers regrouping. And for the moment, they've quieted this gigantic crowd. Shot clock now to 10. Laura McNeil took a look. Now down to six. She'll fire a long one and a round and out. 
Iowa and Indiana remarkably similar stat lines. Iowa 51% shooting, Indiana 50% over the course of the season. They both make 37% from three. They both hit 75% of the foul. And the lane, their short jumper, and that won't drop for Davis. There's Owen using the screen. Got a real good look, but couldn't finish it. Under half a minute to go in the first quarter. Davis looking to make a move. Marshall on the fake. Shot clock a factor now. It's at eight. Davis. And a foul here by Berger. Bit of a bailout there. She picks up number one. Berger, by the way, picking up number two. Last seconds of the quarter. In for Clark. Trying to make a move on the drive. Gets it in. Norm McNeil will dribble out the final seconds of the quarter. So it ends on an uptick for Iowa. It certainly started that way with a burst for the Hawkeyes right out of the gates. Great to have you alongside Rebecca Lobo, Dave O'Brien, and Holly Rowe. Jumper coming, and that's going to be in and out by Scalia, but tough rebound underneath, batted away. Once again, controlled by the Hoosiers as they crash the glass. And trailer 23-18. Holmes draws the double. Parrish through the lane for two. Really good job of attacking the defense that was in rotation because of the double team on Holmes. Sydney Parrish has had some big games. She had 24 against North Carolina, 18 and 7 against Penn State, so she can show up. Here's Martin, who's off to a hot start and continues with a triple. She's got 11 points. Kate Martin has been in a little bit of a shooting slump after starting the season on fire from three and vitally important because of the attention Caitlin Clark gets for her wing players to be able to hit from three. One of the five returning starters from a year ago, Sky on the money, recently had a 24-point game against Ohio State. What do you think so far of uh, the efficiency we're seeing in terms of shooting in this game? I think you have to love it. If you're a basketball bit Clark with this move, they'll give and go in the paint. Yes! That's dazzling. So it's not just about being able to shoot it from half court. Pass and then the beautiful cut in order to get it back. I think your word is perfect. Efficiency. And it's delightful to watch. 28-23. There's on. Scalia again. Off the back of that iron. Top by five. Mark's really feeling it. And close, but can't convert. Especially for Indiana with Grace Berger on the bench with two fouls. So important for them to stay as attached as they can. Play through Mackenzie home. She needs to see the weak side. Needs some help. Threw it away. Picked up by Clark. In transition. Marshall, yes. Big time pressure by the Hawkeyes. Or McNeil gets a look. Yes. They miss Grace Berger. They miss Grace Berger on the floor right now to settle everything down for them. She's at the table ready to check back in. Indiana forces the turnover. Parrish on the bounce feed. Scalia, yes. Well run break. So there's Grace Berger. Getting ready to come back on with a couple of fouls. This is a tough experience, Indiana team, though. A couple times Ohio has made their runs. What's happened? Indiana has answered. Indiana 9 and 0 against top 25 opponents. Long range and around and out. Picked off by Scalia. Zone will back it out. Shot clock at 15. Ronnie Holmes up for a screen. That was D 
defense has been suffocating, but that time, Moore McNeil beat it. I like the decision, though. Bring Mackenzie Holmes out, get her in on-ball action, maybe get her on the roll on a move where it's a little tougher to double her. Clark decides not to shoot it. And then she took 28 shots in the first meeting. Uh, scoring 35. Chloe Moore McNeil got a really good open look. Sonata with another rebound. She averages six and 17 points a game. Here's Clark way downtown. They'll get a second effort. Warlock thought about the drive. 5.37 to go here in the first half. Martin again to penetrate. And draws the contact. Because Sonano, when the double team came, looked opposite wing out. That's what McKenzie Holmes has not been able to do when she's gotten a uh, double, is find the open player on the opposite wing. Burger. Terrific with the basketball. Holmes trying to muscle away, and that's a crowning violation. And a great job that time, Iowa switching it up defensively. Holmes gets it, expecting the double team. It doesn't come, and it bothers her rhythm. So 32 29 Iowa. Indiana with just three turnovers so far. Clock catches, fires, and swishes. Great decision. Moore McNeil out of the game. She's Clark's primary defender. You set a screen for her off the ball to get an open look. Whistle here. Just when you think that Caitlin Clark is maybe off to a bit of a soft start, you look up, she's got 13 points. Once again, drawing all sorts of pressure and lost the basketball. So Indiana kicks it back to the Hawkeyes. Indiana with a 14-game winning streak on the line. Clark on a penetration and a whistle. And she hit the deck. And a little bit slow to rise, but on her feet. Well, guys, she grew up playing against boys. She said she played in the boys' league until she was in fourth grade. That I learned to play against bigger, stronger, more physical players, but she was actually the MVP of that boys' league. She said that's where she gets a little bit of her swagger from, her toughness from, and she said she finally had to switch over to girls' basketball when it was getting too tough. She has to retain some of that toughness and personality that she learned with the boys as a little kid. You now playing against the practice player guys every day in practice, and we called the Iowa game earlier this season where we got to watch practice and the way she talks trash to those guys and just competes with them. It's awesome. Well, you can tell there's tremendous confidence in all parts of her game. Inside that three-point line, but a miss. I was got a big first half out of Kate Martin. Crowd wanted to travel there. Holmes inside where she lives and breathes. Really good job corralling the basketball as Clark came over to help. Holmes with nine. Came in averaging 23.7 rebounds. So now he gives it up. Here's Clark. Out the front iron. Thought they had a couple opportunities to get the ball at the scope inside. Moore McNeil through the paint and a foul. And Chloe Moore McNeil will be at the line. One and a half turnovers a game. She plays 33 minutes a game. Yeah, that's pretty good. Jumper on the way, that one dropped for Stokey. Indiana with an opportunity here to take the lead on this possession late in the second quarter. Berger with a jump pass. Shot clock it in. Berger got it. 
That's her spot, and I like the decision. Instead of forcing one early, understanding how much time is on the shot clock, working around to get an equally good shot. First time Indiana has the lead since it was two to nothing. So less than two to go before halftime. Clark on the way. No. Second effort here for the Hawkeyes. Warnock gives it up. Clark dishing underneath. What a great pass. And a finish by Warnock. Anytime you play with a player who can get you wide open layups, it's a good thing. <laughs> okay, but get a ward up. That one was easy. That vision is off the charts for number 22. For the Hawkeyes. In the lane. And a whistle here with 122 on the clock. Indiana early on had their problems, but they've come roaring back in this one. Look at the attention you see Sonato getting inside. Surrounded. Mark outside the three. Warnock will swing it. Alfalfa will shoot that one, but it's going to be off the iron. Under a minute to go before the break. Could feel a little more momentum here swinging in Indiana's favor approaching halftime. Had a tough time getting it to Holmes, but she'll draw the double, swinging through it, and left it short. That time the double team did come. As soon as she put the ball on the floor. So Iowa trying to retake the lead. Lisa Bluter putting a play on. That was an interesting stomp in her foot yeah. with the horns in the air, right? right. I have to know the genesis of that. <laughs> Five to get off the shot. They want Clark to touch it. Clark with a runner, backs it in. All variety of shots, time for a heave here. Berger with an opportunity, gets it up and away, but it won't go. And at halftime, it's exactly the game we anticipated in so many ways. With Iowa leading by one, 40 to 39. Baseline off the hesitation and hits the deck and draws the whistle. They're gonna get Holmes for number two. And makes the pair. 42 39. For Parrish letting fly. I'll tell you what, Norm McNeil, you gotta know where she is every time we're gonna put it in. Indiana winning their first Big Ten title in 40 years. The only loss came to Michigan State. Berger did not play in that game. He's out with a knee injury at that time. Shot clock is down to three. Berger will fire it up. Pushing the tempo. Here's Warnock. Not there from three point land. Berger to the lane, slamming on the brakes. Or McNeil, short jumper, no. Both sides cold right away. Clark with a scoop, going right to the cup for two. And give her 18. Actually, 20 now. Great, great job by Caitlin Clark bobbing and weaving in there, but also Sonato to keep Mackenzie Holmes on her back to give Clark the clear lane. Holmes had it off 
the hand. On the turnover. Here's Martin in the paint. Drops in two. Caitlin Clark is urging this big crowd to get even louder. Forty six thirty nine. Berger with that mid range. Boy, that's her shot, but that one won't drop. Island able to convert. Sedano with the miss. Here's Parrish. She drops in the three. So important for Indiana to be able to spread the D, to be able to hit from the outside. Only three of 13 on the day from three. But on the season, they shoot 37%, so you would expect them to shoot better here in the second half. Fourth point game had a whistle. That's a heck of a battle. Warren McNeil trying to contain Clark. We know Clark is so good from deep, but she's also good with the penetration. Look right there, Sonano keeps Holmes on her high side, so it's an easy lay for Clark. Give the big girl some credit on that one. Oh. Contact there, Clark just bounces off that, drops it in, and she'll go to the line. And look at the emotion from the player of the year candidate. Clark looking for another three-point play, not this time. Bring the deal eight points for three personals. Rizone gave it up off the baseline. Harris, the Oregon transfer, came back home to play for the Hoosiers. That was a tough angle by Moore McNeil. On the run out, Marshall wide open. She's been shooting the three really well lately, though, so that's a good shot for Gabby Marshall to take there. And on the year 39%, she had five threes in that loss to Maryland. The last six games, she's been shooting 63% for three. And a whistle off the ball that was with 11 on the shot clock. Jesse Dickerson, Natasha Kemi, and Mark Rush, the officials today. We will not fall in Iowa on the move. Warnock with the dish. And that's a travel. There's no with a miss, but a whistle and a foul on the deck. And the crowd doesn't like this at all. Kate Martin is furious. That's going to be four. Yeah. I'm sorry, three. And it takes her out of the aim. She comes out on the swing. Holmes can't convert. 48-42. Clark. Oh, he's so wary about her stopping way outside that three-point line, but that's going to be switched in. Nothing but net by Warnock. She can hit that shot. 41% from three. She'll be at the line. Attempting that shot sometimes it gives you a little bit of boost of confidence to see one go through. 
Again, Indiana has beaten every single top 25 foe they have faced this year. Nine in Iowa coming in ranked number six, Indiana number two. And Holmes with a rebound. Now, if Iowa wins, they're the two seed in the Big Ten tournament. If they lose, they're going to be the number three seed. So, still something on the line. Yes. Indiana working around the perimeter. Oh, that's a very tough shot. That won't drop. Clark has it knocked away from behind. No foul on the play. It's been incredible, and the Iowa fans have done a great job. But not only that, we've got about 40 fans from um, supporting the Hoosiers. They've come all the way from Mason City, Iowa, because um, Sheffield's mom was, excuse me, Sheffield's mom was smart enough to get tickets before it sold out. This game sold out about three weeks in advance. And so her mom was smart. Amy, who played at Valparaiso, she got the tickets early, and there's about 40 Hoosier fans way up in the top section back there. They're representing as loud as they can. Sydney Parrish's mom. Just a little pocket of red, a little tiny pocket of red, <laughs> but loud. We can hear him from time to time. A little tiny pocket's better than no pocket at all, Dave O'Brien. Definitely. Clark. Oh shit! Everybody and the foul too. What a cagey play. Yeah, the three-point play to make it 54-48. It is game 15 and then 25-5 and five. Nobody else even close at his number one in Division One. Holmes, by the way, scoreless in the quarter. Berger with a misfire. All the momentum belongs to the Hawkeyes right now. Will it keep on coming? It will. Mark from the corner. She shook off that foul and drops in a long one. Or McNeil with an answer from three-point land. Big time answer. Big time answer. You get all the folks in. Black and gold sitting back down in their seats with that one. Mark with a bounce. And a whistle. Iowa opens it up a little bit now. 59-51. Indiana has won 14 straight games. Berger is sweeping into the paint. And two. Oh, she's tough, huh? Yes. Unflappable, just gets in there and answers when they need her to answer. Kind of seeks out a little contact. Well, look at her frame. She is one strong woman. Holmes grabbing the rebound. Kenzie Holmes with the staggering statistic of making 69% of her shots. She gets the ball a lot right there and will draw the foul. Holmes 70% at the foul line. If you make 70% or close to 70% of your shots, you're in a different league. For sure. Parrish knocked down. It has got physical. Marshall will swing it. Sonata goes back outside. Martin, who's had a hot day, gave it up that time. Got a good look out. Shot by Warnock doesn't drop. And approaching a minute to play in the quarter. Put him home. Try to get another foul on Monica Sonata. Berger again to her right and two more. And she's really good for a guard in terms of back to the basket scoring. 14 for her. So this is a three point game. The back iron. Indiana crashing the glass. There's own team away with it. Berger heating up. You can tell she's seeking the basketball. Through the lane, had to save it. On command, she'll work to her right, and yes. Right, you put not only Monica Sonano in a tough defensive position, but that could have been probably called a foul sure. as well. Put her right on her hip. One point game. And a game that has totally lived up to all the hype. 
Puck off the window and a foul, a blocking foul. Clark with 35 the first time they met, along with 10 assists, but he's looking for a different ending. First one went 87 78, Indiana. He's going to get an extra 3.8 seconds of rest going into the quarter break. She is a very tough player, too. She spends a lot of time down on the floor getting knocked around. Just an incredible talent. He has had a legendary career. Here's Berger to heave it. And that's the end. It's been exactly what we anticipated in this highly touted game. You guys, in that last Iowa huddle, Lisa Bluter just reset everything for her team. She reminded them they've got four timeouts here. Use one to avoid a turnover. Then she challenged them to do better on the boards, boxing out, and turn up the heat on Grace Berger. They think that number 34 is getting too hot. Got a special defense in just to contain Grace Berger right now. Caitlin Clark with 29. Iowa on top, 63-58. Can hit that one from way downtown, but not here. Holmes does a good job popping up the rebound right to herself. Marshall tips it out for Iowa, so it'll be in the end of all. And we've seen Caitlin Clark take it all the way to the basket. We've seen the deep three in here. Just a beautiful little floater off the glass as well. There's not a whole lot offensively that she can't do. I wonder, is this game going to come down to a Caitlin Clark jump shot? In the final seconds in front of this great crowd, Holmes weaving in for two. Look like Iowa a couple of possessions in that zone defense, and Berger does a jo great job attacking it and finding an open teammate. Marshall sticks it. Gabby Marshall, senior from Cincinnati. And up to six for the Hawkeyes. Burger surrounded. Parrish open. Yes. Indiana has shooters, and they have shooters with size. Sydney Parrish, 6'2. Yarden Garzone, 6'3. So it's hard to limit their vision when they catch and get an open field for a three. Parrish also a very good rebounder. Clark with a one hander off the backboard. And it continues to pile on the points. She's got 31. Berger on right through Holmes. Open shooter is Scalia. And a whistle along the baseline. How about a 30 piece? Is it a 30 piece these days or a 30 burger for Caitlin Clark? Well, she's got it right now. We're still almost eight minutes to go in this one. Kate Martin with foul number four. It's just 32 career games with 30 or more. Martin to the bench. Berger swishes that one in. Mid-range game is a sight to behold for her. I guess it'll be a 30-piece for Caitlin Clark, and whatever Grace Berger gets would be a winner for Berger. Now ball to let's fly, no. Again, just three points separating these two. Norman Beals playing with four. Another touch. Not this time. Yeah, we wonder if they're going to get out of this zone, no Iowa, because Indiana's gotten some great looks from the perimeter. Clock with a turnover. Berger. And a foul here inside with 6.56 to go. Where she does miss a shot like that, she'll often drop her hands 
and stare at them like I can't believe it. <laughs> How did you fail me? Revealed, denied in the lane. Parrish is open again and drills another three. And that puts Indiana on top 70 to 68. Sidney Parrish is an outstanding three-point shooter. 36% on the season. She continues to find herself wide open. And a timeout. Iowa takes one. Marshall will drop that one in. That entire possession, Dave, she was over there clapping her hands like, I am ready and want the ball. One of the great things about this matchup, we got a lot of players who want the ball. That's going to be a foul. Clark needed one rebound, two assists for her 10th career triple double. Clark will swing it. And close in one. Sedano getting it exactly where she wants it. So another assist for Clark. What a well designed play. Caitlin Clark coming off a double screen, and then Sonano just posting strong, finishing with the left and the ammo. She doesn't usually so, show much emotion. <laughs> she was held to six points and in foul trouble when they met in Bloomington. She's really lived up to her preseason pre all big 10 selection. Will that continue to be true? Paris thought about another three. Berger drawing a double. Now Marshall defending and she goes down and loses the basketball. Five minutes to go. Iowa number six, Indiana number two. Took the double coming at Caitlin Clark. And Holly mentioned it in the last huddle. Lisa Bluter told her team, don't turn it over. We've got timeouts. Clark just used one. Just amazing. Turned over. Here comes Indiana. Within four points. Harris tried to swing it. Picked off. Davis will lay it in. She double, double dribbled that midcourt. I think may, may have gotten away with that. She double dribbled that midcourt. Morgan Deal on the penetration. Yes. And the poise of this Indiana team to answer when they need to answer, to quiet the crowd when they need to do so. Well, they've done it all day long. Iowa got shot out of a cannon to begin this thing. But Indiana came back, kept on coming back, eventually took the lead for a bit. Been chasing most of the afternoon. Marshall beyond the three. Davis. And Holmes there for the rebound. And the crowd hanging on every possession. Here at Carver Hawkeye. See Gabby Marshall just trying to deny anything back to Grace Berger once she gets rid of it. on the attack. Yes, two more. Boy, she's had a big seven out. Uh, not only hitting from three, which is her bread and butter, but that time a great drive to the left side. Came in averaging 12 points a game. Second half, she has 14. Davis trying to shred the D and will draw the foul. A 313 showing. Harris with the foul a moment ago. Here's Martin out high. He's had such a big impact on this one, and she's about to go to the foul line. Dave Martin is really, I thought, the first quarter story for the Hawkeyes, even more so than Caitlin Clark was. She's been coming to Iowa Hawkeye camp since she was five years old. She's done every single year since she was five. She said it's a dream come true to be playing in black and gold. I never thought I'd be here, but every waking moment on the basketball court, I was working towards putting on this jersey. And here she is in one of the biggest games of her career, having a great game. Yeah, dream come true, really. 
You can see the passion with which she has played today. When she got in foul trouble, had to leave the game, she was fiery. 19 points for Martin. So she has blown a season average away. Harris has that one blocked. Still digging and draws the foul. Warnock is all over her and commits foul number three. Thing when the stars play like stars. Warnock with a bounce speed, and yes. Sonano, the 6 3 grab, makes it 79 76. This crowd has been a huge part of the narrative, haven't they? <laughs> 220 left. Berger to Holmes, yeah! And a whistle as well with a little more than two minutes. So we are dead even at 79. Warnock looking. Here's Clark. Clark on the drive off balance. Oh, it spun out. But it was in the cylinder and kicked out. So now the Hoosiers can jump into the lead. Under two minutes to play. Grace Berger with a jumper. Around and out. Well, that one was inside. See two, they're running two now at Caitlin Clark. Clark outside the three. Doesn't need a lot of room, that's for sure. Here's Martin. What a pass. Sedano commits to that play time and time again and gets it to go. 107 to go. Berger. Holmes. Yes. Keep going back to it, whether it's the on-ball screen or handoff between Grace Berger and Mackenzie Holmes. It's very hard for Iowa to defend. 81 apiece. This has been some game. So went down and a whistle there in the paint. 48.7 going. And the 6 3 grad, grad makes both of those. And it's 83 81. Tumble and fouled. Machine and Clark, just like the last time, have been going toe to toe. Down the stretch, Caitlin Clark in a tie game, under 30, remaining to be played. Martin. Caitlin Clark, the All-American, taking her time. 11 on the shot clock. Martin looking up at that. Clark to make a move. Feeding inside, and that'll roll off the iron. Five seconds to go, and a timeout, Indiana, with 4.6, and an opportunity to get up a shot to win the game. Holmes. Holmes with two seconds, spinning inside, and a whistle on the play. With .8 to go, and a foul. Wow. And Mackenzie wow. Holmes about to go to the line. And she makes the pair. Keep your eye on number 22. Martin looking. Here's Clark. She fires. And goes! 